Despite accounting for more than 70% of our planet's surface, 80% of our oceans are unmapped, unobserved, and unexplored as of 2022, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So, it's no surprise that scientists are constantly coming across new ocean oddities. Consider work from Brazilian ichthyologist, Luiz Roca, whose work in the twilight zone, depths between 200 and 500 feet deep, where the light is dim and the temperature is cold, has uncovered more than 30 new species. There's also the recently discovered water world, properly called Toy 1452b, a planet that could feature a giant, global liquid ocean. Researchers plan to take a closer look at this watery wonder, using the James Webb Space Telescope. Put simply, no matter where we look, there's water. And if it's so important to us, maybe it's critical for alien life as well. And maybe, just maybe, they've been here all along? The proof is out there, but are we willing to accept it? Over the years there have been countless UFO sightings that has left us stumped, and in 75% of the cases, we have seen them disappearing underwater. It is also strange that most of these UFO sightings happen near a water body. What is even stranger, is that once inside, they become invisible to our radars. But let's not talk about UFOs today. Instead, we will talk about USOs, unidentified submerged objects, and believe it or not, these are way more convincing of the presence of something much more intelligent than us, on this planet, extraterrestrial or not. But we will let you be the judge of that after you have watched the video. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Welcome to Lab 360, it's time to explore. In the summer of 2011, Peter Lindbergh and Dennis Obaria, a couple of treasure hunters, along with their Ocean X diving team were hunting on the floor of the northern Baltic Sea, when suddenly, their sonar image caught a strange object, which would later be known as the Baltic Sea Anomaly. Featuring a strange 1,000-foot-long runway, and a strange object that appears to have slid across it, the Baltic Sea Anomaly has seen divers take closer looks. What was found below by the divers were steps and compartments, the potential for tunnels and passageways beneath the surface of the unknown object, and an ability for the object to block sonar. Those heading below the surface to snap some photographs of the interesting item, found their equipment was not in working order, with sensor and photographic equipment both failing. Mysterious electrical interferences were cited as causing trouble, draining the recently charged batteries, and making it impossible to get a closer look. Outlandish theories live on, not just that it may be an extraterrestrial spacecraft which landed in the depths of the ocean, but that it may be a secret Nazi bunker. Simon Andrews, who first wrote the suggestion, that the bunker could be an alien device, has noted it could be a secret military project, pushed by Adolf Hitler during World War II. Claims a bunker was lowered into the sea were aired, but other claims over the presence of the bunker, including that of an ancient temple or Atlantis, have also been noted. There is also the chance that the Baltic Sea anomaly, which has stunned experts around the globe, is nothing more than a glacial deposit. However, nothing explains why electric devices will not work near it. And this is where things turn weird. Peter Lindbergh and Dennis Obaria, after having discovered the object, decided to go back again, to get more pictures of it, and collect some samples. However, when their divers were just about to make the dive, suddenly, readings showed that the temperature on top of the object, drastically dropped below zero. In normal conditions, it is around 6 to 7 degrees Celsius. What caused the temperature around the object to drop suddenly, is unknown. Regardless of that, the divers make the jump, and reach the ocean floor after two hours. And when they touch the object, which until that point looked like concrete, turned black. The divers were taken aback. They had made over 2,000 dives before that, and had never come across anything like this. Long story short, they returned to the ship with a sample, which was later studied by scientists. They found that the object was burned from the outside, yet cold from the inside, as if the burning object had suddenly entered a cold region, and hence its crystals couldn't grow. That perfectly explains a meteoroid, however, scientists also feel that it can be a remnant of a volcano. But a volcano remnant in the middle of nowhere, in the depths of the Baltic Sea? Nothing can explain that. 
The curiosity around the object became a global headline, and Peter and Dennis decided to go back again, to get some more pictures, and collect some more samples. For that, they needed funding. However, news soon started to spread via media, that the object was nothing but a piece of rock, a glacial deposit. As this news began to spread, and the interest around the object began to die down, investors pulled off their funding, and Peter and Dennis began to receive death threats from random email addresses, that not only threatened them, but their families too. Who are these people that do not want them to go down there? Who are the people who do not want us to find about the object's mysterious origins? Makes you think huh? And whatever happened to Peter and Dennis, is sad, very sad, and you can watch their entire story by clicking on the link in the description. If you can support them, please do, because without them, we would have never come across this object, that looks nothing like what we've ever discovered in the depths of our waters. Moving on from the Baltic Sea anomaly, to Lake Baikal in Russia, the deepest freshwater body in the world. Fishermen tell of powerful lights coming from the deep, and objects flying up from the water. In one case in 1982, a group of military divers training at Baikal, spotted a group of humanoid creatures, dressed in silvery suits. The encounter happened at a depth of 50 meters, and the divers tried to catch the strangers. Three of the seven men died, while four others were severely injured. Meanwhile, we all know about the mysterious events that has happened in the region of Bermuda Triangle over the years, before they almost suddenly stopped. Now, mystery holes have been spotted on ocean floor, that is baffling scientists. These holes were discovered by oceanographers earlier this year, and they have no idea what made them, or how they came about. However, UFO experts are certain, that the strange markings are proof of alien visits. We have long suspected aliens are using the ocean as a way of staying out of the way, and exploring the Earth on their own terms. These holes simply cannot be explained any other way, as they appear closely aligned, in a regularly repeating pattern, with tiny piles of sediment piled around them. The holes were found by the crew of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Explorer vessel, as they investigated the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, a mostly unexplored region of the seafloor, which is part of the world's largest mountain range. But this is not the first time the mysterious spots have been seen. Marine scientists from the U.S. National Marine Fisheries Service, also spotted the bizarre hollows in the ocean floor, during a dive in 2004. NOAA researchers said, these holes have been previously reported in the region, but their origin remains a mystery. While they almost look human-made, the little piles of sediment around the holes make them seem like they were excavated by something? What do you guys think? Aliens, ancient beings, or conspiracy theories? And lastly, perhaps the most intriguing of all, is the case of an object that came from interstellar space, and now lies in the depths of the Pacific Ocean. The year is 2014. A guest from beyond our solar system is Earthbound, and we have absolutely no idea. Back on our planet, life is going on as usual, when the meteor enters our atmosphere, ignites in a fireball in the skies, and crashes into the ocean off the coast of Papua New Guinea. The object wasn't all that big, just a meter or so across, but its significance is massive. An interstellar material delivered to Earth, that hopefully now lies dormant in the depths of our waters. Now, the Earth receives up to 50 metric tons of meteors every day, and most of that burn up in the atmosphere, but the ones that don't burn up, are no bigger than a pebble, and that's why pose no threat to life. Then what is so special about this one from 2014? You see, what is so notable about this meteor is the very high speed and unusual direction at which it encountered our planet. But if no one was tracking it, then how do we know it was coming at us in high speed? Sensors on a classified US government satellite, designed to detect foreign missile launches, were the sole known witnesses to the fireball. And when scientists calculated its trajectory and speed, they realized that it had come from interstellar space. Hmm. Unusual high speed and direction of a space rock. Does it remind you of something else? If Umwamua comes to your mind, then you are not alone. What is amazing here, is that the information about the asteroid was not immediately made public by the government. It took two men, Avi Loeb and Amir Siraj, 
three years to have the government accept the origin of the interstellar object and make it public. The story starts in April 2019. When Avi Loeb was eight months into the study of data of Oumuamua, which was then considered to be the first interstellar visitor to the solar system. Now here is an information that you would want to hold on to, Oumuamua was traveling through our solar system at a blistering speed of 87.3 kilometers per second. At Earth's distance from the Sun, any object moving faster than about 42 kilometers per second, is in an unbounded hyperbolic orbit relative to our star, meaning that it is too speedy to be captured by the sun's gravity. Anything traveling faster than this local celestial speed limit, may come from, and if unobstructed, should return to interstellar space. Having studied Oumuamua, Loeb knew that there must be other interesting objects in NASA's Center for Near-Earth Object Studies catalog, and approached his student Amir Siraj with it. Within days, Siraj had identified the 2014 meteor as a potential interstellar meteor candidate, as the object had a speed closer to 60 km per second before entering Earth. This was going to change everything. If the Center for Near-Earth Object Studies data, which composed of independently verified data from the scientific community, were correct, the meteor would dethrone Oumuamua to become the first interstellar object to visit our solar system. They submitted a paper on it to be peer-reviewed, but it was turned down, and the scientific community declined to formally designate CNEO's January 8, 2014 as an interstellar object. This was the case because the data used to calculate the meteor's impact on Earth was gathered by a U.S. Department of Defense satellite. And revealing the precise values of the measurement of the object, became a closely guarded secret, because the U.S. military refused to disclose the capabilities of their satellite to the world. Dejected, Avi Loeb and Siraj moved on to other projects, however the story doesn't end there. If anything, it has only begun. Thanks to a partnership between the Department of Defense and NASA, three years later, in 2022, the data describing the event eventually were shared on a public database, along with data for more than 900 other fireballs, recorded by U.S. government sensors, between 1988 and the present day. The 2014 meteor is now officially, the first known object originating from outside our solar system, and its fragments are buried deep inside our waters. Fascinating, isn't it? Well, that's what Professor Loeb thinks too. In fact, he believes that the object might be a piece of alien technology, and that's why he's planning an expedition to retrieve the object from the floor of the Pacific Ocean. Loeb said that the report released by the Department of Defense showed the light curve of the explosion of this object, which revealed that it had material strength tougher than iron, and it was tougher than all the other space rocks that the U.S. government identified over the past decade, about 272 of them. So it must have been something unusual, definitely not the same as the rocks we find in the solar system. Much tougher than that. Remember, Avi Loeb is one of the most respectable scientists in the astronomy community, and if he believes that the object is alien technology, then there are high chances that it is one. What do you guys think? Drop in your comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to Lab360, because together, we will explore.